and I'm gonna find it. Did he ever mention the burial of a priest and a passion for gold? He told me you were digging in the wrong place, huh? I can kill him now, huh? Get off that horse and make one false move and I'll blow your face off. Yeah, Jeffrey Howard, right? Yes, Michael Moriarty. Oh my gosh. Wow, wow. yes, indeed, indeed. This is a total thrill, my friend. I have been a fan of yours since I can remember, and speaking today is, is just one of the highlights of my career. Oh my God, what a lovely beginning. We're <laughs> going to have fun for 10 minutes. Absolutely, and thank you for talking to me today about gunfight at Dry River. You know, well, I prefer the I prefer the title it was originally, which is Dry River. Period. It's oh, a it's poetic film, and Gunfight at Dry River turns it into Gunfight at the OK Corral, and it's not that kind of western. It's not, but I was just going to say, you know, if you're going to do a western, the title is half the battle. You need something really catchy, and I thought Gunfight at Dry River. You know, how could you go wrong with a title like that, right? <laughs> oh, it sounds like you told them to make it gunfight. I prefer a dry river. But of course, I'm, I can afford to because I'm, I'm, I'm not producing it or putting money into it. Well, you know, you're not a stranger to Westerns. You know, you Pale Rider is a classic in and of itself. So and what, it's closely related. The two films are almost uh, brother and sister. So what, what had attracted you to make another Western this, at this point in your career? Uh, the role and, and the script. I read the script and I fell in love with her as a writer. Yeah, and um, Faye Valen it was the author. And it's a, it's a fascinating trip and fascinating experience. And definitely, because there was challenges playing a blind character. Has, have you ever had that kind of challenge before in a role before? Uh, I don't remember ever having played a blind person before, but I found the experience enthralling because indeed my greatest love and the reason I, I, I want to stay alive, but I can't anymore, is my wife uh, that I met in love with. Her. I couldn't even see her, but I didn't have to. So uh, my plan is, and my hope, is that they do uh, Dry River Part Two, and we get to see my wife, because in flashback, because my daughter talks about me, and, uh, and it's already after my death, but we, you see me sitting in my house with a hole in the wall, yeah, that my daughter, uh, she took a shotgun and blew a hole in the wall just to prove that she could defend herself. That was my job. My last job on earth was to teach my daughter how to defend herself. And then, uh, then I kind of walk rather willingly into my own end. But she, he has a close relationship with his daughter, Hawkins does. Oh, oh yes. And, and, um, uh, she gives a, a, a marvelous performance, Isabella. You know, it's, it's it's flawless and uh, yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, she's probably a lot like uh, her mother. And I love the theme in the movie that you know water is more precious than gold, and we still have the same battle in today's West over water. Precisely, and I'm glad you reminded me. It's a great line because it's true. And, uh, um, but uh, um, the drought, the savage drought that hit the dry river country uh, came because of evil in the country. And once uh, my daughter handles, uh, like Clint Eastwood handles getting rid of the evil of dry, dry, dry river, then uh, rain comes and falls and life begins again it cleanses the village it cleanses the border town uh, yes <laughs> and, and speaking of the border town where did they shoot the movie michael because it was just picturesque yeah, they shot in spain did you yeah it was uh yeah it was rather like uh clint eastwood early career he he, he was uh 
a filmmaker uh, of spaghetti westerns. Uh, and I'm ended up doing an American film in Spain and, and most of its creators live in England. So um, I've got a kind of uh, Clint Eastwood touch to me now. <laughs> uh, it shows through, it's a great performance. You know, in our final moments here, Michael, uh, you know, when I was 16 years old, there were two movies that you made that were just, I couldn't get enough of, they defined me. One was Q, which yeah. I just thought was just brilliant. And the it other is- so, so did I, it's one of my best performances. Absolutely. And one of the great critics in New York said that he, you know, I expected him to be uh, uh, nominated for an Academy Award, except the film itself was not really the highest of quality. Yeah, but the story was intriguing in your performance. I'll, I never forgot Q. I've seen it many, many times. And the other one I saw when I was a teenager was The Stuff, which I think is a cult classic. I just love The Stuff. Oh, well, same director. Yes. <laughs> so I'm glad in the name of, uh, yes, a beautiful man. And I'm sorry he's gone. Um, yeah. Well, Michael, congratulations on a great uh, on a great role in another great Western. I, this has been a total thrill. Thank you so much, and uh, I appreciate your time. Well, thank you for being a divine interview. <laughs> thank you, Michael. Take care and have a good day. God bless you too. Bye.